Mm. Alina, I'll, I'll kick off directly uh, with you. So we're in Brussels. Central Asia is quite far away. Yeah. Um, why should we care about Central Asia? What's, what's the uh, unique selling point in Central Asia? Let me start by telling you a um, sort of fun story um, or a main guidance that we have received from Ursula von der Leyen for our work in Central Asia. Uh, last year in November, EU um, held an EU Central Asia Economic Forum and Ursula von der Leyen uh, recorded uh, a speech uh, for to open uh, the forum and she spoke, she spoke, she spoke and then she at the very end summed up Central Asia Matters. Since then, uh, this uh, motto and this hashtag has been sort of guiding principles uh, for our work. Um, why Central Asia matters, it, um, you know, Central Asia importance has grown for us over the years. Um, and um, with uh, sort of each new strategy that the European Union has adopted towards Central Asia, there are more and more areas of cooperation and more and more areas of mutual uh, benefit uh, for our um, engagement and for our relations. So probably something that everybody uh, thinks about immediately when they think of Central Asia it's, I is its geostrategic uh, location, a bridge, as we like to say, or crossroads between Europe and Central Asia. I think the other uh, point that people think about is uh, its share in EU's energy security uh, and in um, critical raw materials. And of course, the market potential of 70 million people, maybe more now, Farhot. I mean, I think, you know, uh, Central Asia's very young uh, population is its great um, asset. And then, of course, uh, something that has become increasingly important uh, for Europe is um, regional security in Central Asia, especially uh, we see it growing over the past year uh, since Taliban takeover in Afghanistan. Uh, something else, I think, or two other points, which sometimes maybe we forget a little bit, uh, but they are also extremely important, is Central Asian uh, integration into the global uh, system. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, since reform processes started some years ago in, in a number of Central Asian countries, I think there is more interest for Central Asian countries to integrate into multilateral system. And I think it is important for European Union because multilateralism is sort of its vision um, uh, for for the global um, order. And uh, the other thing is uh, European Union's climate agenda. It is very ambitious and uh, it's very important to get Central Asia on board. And uh, also as Central Asia is one of probably one of the most vulnerable regions to climate change, I think it's very important for us that that is addressed properly uh, on the ground. So Alina is um, telling a bit about climate, energy security, regional stability and so on. Farkad, you're from the region. Uh, in your recent study, uh, you pointed out that Central Asia has been very important both for Moscow and for Beijing, for Russia and for China. Russia, of course, the five Central Asian republics have uh, been previously part of the Soviet Union. They're also a central part of the Belt and Road Initiative but yet you pointed out in your study uh, that the old division of labor, if you can call it like that, that uh, Russia is uh, responsible for the uh, security and hard politics in, in Central Asia and, and China bears the main responsibility for economic development, that this is uh, breaking up. Could you please illustrate what you mean with that? The, the starting point where uh, Alina said that Central Asia is important what was kind of, you know, exactly what we needed. Central Asia is important. Central Asia matters. But is Central Asia a priority in the neighboring powers' foreign policy? I would say no. It's not the priority for China, for Russia, for EU, for the United States. It is important, but it's not the priority number one. And that was actually a guiding principle in their foreign policy. So we don't want to be present permanently in all sectors, right? So why not just to divide our sphere of influence and work closely with Central Asian countries within the boundaries which we have set for ourselves as priorities. And it so happened that Russia, as the legacy of the Soviet Union, continued being a major political, geopolitical and security actor in Central Asia. 
And then China, of course, with its growing economy in Central Asia, it's a neighboring region, rich for resources, very important for the Chinese connectivity, you know, ambitions. They started channeling huge amount of money to Central Asia and they ended up being an economic power. So what role the European Union was playing? EU has always been playing a very important role of a normative power, promoting democracy, transparency, accountability, kind of you know promoting regional cooperation and trying give trying to give you know local voices you know uh, uh, um, uh, 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 certain importance. That was a division of labor before, but now this division of labor is fading. We can just look at some of the numbers. Okay, Russia still a very important security guarantor, a political actor. But does it mean that China is not actually stepping into the security and military domain? Unfortunately, not anymore. And as I said, if you look at uh, some of the numbers, now China is the second largest arms sale, you know, a sailing partner to all five Central Asian countries. Uh, um, Ten years ago, the share of the Chinese, you know, uh, kind of uh, in the arms sale with Central Asian states was less than 2%, 1, 1.5. And now it's almost 20%. One-fifth of the arms coming to Central Asia are Chinese. And the military bases, China is building military bases, not all over Central Asia yet, but in the neighboring countries. Tajikistan, for instance, and they want to increase the number of uh, military you know, outposts up to 40 very soon. Uh, uh, these are just a few examples of how China is stepping in into the military and uh, security domain. Can we say that Russia is not part of an economic development in Central Asia and it has nothing to do with it because it's covering security? Absolutely not. Russia is still one of the major economic partners. In fact, second to China for all major economies in Central Asia. The amount of bilateral trade with Kazakhstan, for instance, amounts up to $20 billion, as much as uh, uh, the Chinese you know, uh, share of the trade. So Russia is an important economic power. And the EU, with this new strategy in 2019 and the EU strategic compass, now they are also trying to bring up visibility for themselves. Up until recently, EU has done a lot of things for Central Asia, but most of the projects were very local. They worked with, uh, uh, you know, on the ground with the people. Now they want to enhance their visibility, doing this without engaging in broader economic relationships and stepping into security would be impossible.